lives if necessary to protect their home country. Sentiment echoed halfway across the world in the Empire of Japan. At the end of the war, the kamikaze terrorized the American Pacific Fleet. But a far more frightening application of the suicide pilot was in the works. A manned torpedo known simply as Titan, the Heaven Shaker. There are only four episodes left. And this week, a trucker is sitting on a time bomb. The fuel tank is on a leak. <laughs> Never trust anybody over 90. Keep a little gray with new touch of gray. November 20th, 1944, 4 a.m. Most sailors aboard the USS Mississinewa are fast asleep. The fleet oiler sits in the midst of a massive American anchorage near the Pacific Atoll of Ulithi, the final staging area for the invasion of Japan. You lift the anchorage uh, measures 21 miles wide by 9 miles, a very, very large uh, area. At any one point in time, 200 U.S. ships could be anchored in there. Matter of fact, U.S. veterans often joke that they could walk all the way across the length of Ulithi and never touch the water. To the southwest, aboard the Japanese submarine I-47, Captain Senji Orita observes the massive American anchorage by periscope. Orita's attack plan was to move I-47 to southeast of Ulithi and make his attack to the northwest and into the central part of the anchorage. Mounted on the top deck of I-47 are what look like modified torpedoes. These are the Kaiten, piloted suicide submarines intended to destroy ships anchored at Ulithi. For honor and the glory of Japan, Sub Lieutenant Sakio Nashina, co inventor of the Kaiten, leads the terrifying mission. At 4 a.m., Nashina and three other suicide pilots launch from the deck of I-47. The top secret plan quickly goes awry. Two Kai-10 run aground shortly after launch. Another is detected as a midget sub and sunk by U.S. destroyers. That leaves one Kai-10 piloted by Nishina. Nishina's target is an aircraft carrier, but aiming the torpedo proves difficult. Kai-10 pilots, uh, unlike Kamikaze, could not see where they were going. They were sealed in their submersible and essentially blind. The only opportunity they had to see their target was to hand crank up a stubby periscope and take a bearing, try and sight your target, and take a final high-speed run in. An aircraft carrier is an unattainable target. But honor demands that an American ship be sunk. Nishina makes a fateful decision. He will attack the nearest American ship, the USS Mississinewa. The sailors cannot know the horror that lies in store for them at the hands of Imperial Japan's newest secret weapon, the Kaiten. By mid-1944, Japan's Pacific Empire was collapsing. Scarred by crushing defeats at Midway and the Marianas, Japanese military commanders turned to increasingly desperate measures. Including the Toko, or suicide weapons. The hopeless logic that put pilots in the cockpits of kamikaze aircraft was soon applied to the infamous Type 93 long lance torpedo, 
an idea pioneered by Sekio Nishida and Hiroshi Kuroki. By adding a small cockpit amidships and some rudimentary steering equipment, the torpedo was transformed into a guided missile. The pilot could steal in right under the nose of picket ships and PT boats that were not able to detect such a small craft. In the summer of 1944, the Imperial Navy sought volunteers to take the suicide subs into battle. The trainees in Kaiten were referred to as pilots of this weapon, and they were largely drawn from the ranks of the Imperial Japanese Navy aviators. Harumi Kawasaki was one such aviator. <laughs> I assume that it has something to do with aircraft. Upon graduation, we were put on a train, destination unknown. They wouldn't tell us where we were going. Later on board, we were told that we were going to Pure. In Pure, we were taken to a submarine base. Then, only then, I realized what the new weapon may be. The Kai Ten was 48 feet long, with a simple propeller engine driven by compressed air. And packed into the nose of the Kai Ten was the warhead. It was extraordinary, simply breathtaking. The Kaiten carries 1.6 tons of explosives. The bomber carries just a quarter of that. There's no other weapon that alone carries this much. Only we could single-handedly sink a battleship or an aircraft carrier. I was proud. You fly the the co-inventor of the Kaiten, Sekio Nishina, volunteers to be one of the first men to take the weapon into battle. On November 20th, 1944, at the controls of the Kaiten suicide submarine, Sekio Nishina prepares for impact. Former Kaiten pilot, Harumi Kawasaki, describes the attack run. Once in range of the enemy, we take the safety off, but it wouldn't explode yet. We identify our target and make a high-speed run in with a detonator in our hand. On impact, we'd be thrown forward. That would trigger a second detonator. It was a fail-safe mechanism. At 5.45 a.m., the Heaven Shaker strikes. A massive explosion rocks the Mississinawa. Fuel oil ignites, creating a firestorm. swept through the forward berthing compartment through the open hatches and enveloped men who were instantly killed in their bunks. On the opposite end of the ship, 19-year-old seaman second class Herb Deitch gets a rude awakening. I was in my bunk and when the blast hit, I hit the floor. I was the second bunk up. And then, actually, I just wanted to find out what the trouble was. Flames leap from a 73-foot hole in the hull. The choking smoke billows over a mile into the sky. Sailors uh, throughout Ulithia and surrounding vessels saw the ship was completely enveloped in smoke and flames and felt that not a single Mississippi sailor could possibly have survived. Herb Deitch makes it to the top deck and surveys the scene. 
All you saw was...